that because what often it's transitioning to the shorter length so we're not going to go very fast right ready yeah okay make sure we've got both hands on reins okay and so if you were now to, put, to go into post position so coming out of the saddle you shorten your reins and stand up that's it but what's happened if you look in the mirror you see your foot has straight away gone backwards. Right. So you, what you've got to think of is if you're sitting like this, when yeah. you stand, that part of your leg stays exactly where it was. That's better. Yeah, so that, because that's the bit that's keeping you on now. Yeah. That's the part that has to be solid. Yeah, so you can feel that. And then you're going to now absorb the movement from your knee to your hip. Okay. Yeah, without your hips going down, so it's your hips that are really doing the moving, rather than your lower legs. The lower legs are still, that's better. That's more than that? Yeah. yeah. So what happens is, is as your, your stirrups get shorter, yeah. you have to really concentrate on that lower leg, that it stays still, because that is the, the main, the main um, habit of any, everybody who's ridden. Yeah. normally and hasn't learned to ride on a racehorse yet because you just sink it in it. Yeah. and it's like when you rise and fall you need to be rising from your foot rather than from your knee so the whole movement is coming you're going up, down, up, down using your core strength you're not gripping as much here you're not gripping no. with your knees right. so, you're, so you're not sort of going um, <laughs> up, down like this yeah. Which a lot of dressage yeah. is done through the knee. Whereas yeah. we're. My instructor says to me, she says I do grip too much of my knees, she needs to do the exercise of bringing my knee yeah. up and out. Well, I yeah. can commonly say, we have the students with like riding experience, yeah. and they come in here, they always do the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because, what, because what? they were all, all life expected to ride this. No, no, how you, how you move to. Because if you grip with your knee, yeah. as soon as you grip with your knee, if you looked at me, as soon as my knee starts gripping, yeah. I start changing the, the, the form of my legs. Right. My legs come out. Yeah. Yeah. And my hips close in. So basically, if you block any part of your body, you're going to take yourself out of rhythm. You're going to take out of balance rather than rhythm. Okay. So if you sort of like stiffen stiffen your knee by blocking it, then then your body starts to be um, not in balance with the horses. So we've got to think about the central balance of the horse and the central balance of the horse is here. Yeah. Yeah. And so we've just been kind of with us. So we've got to balance ourselves, which is through our body, just behind the withers. So we stay balanced together. I see. Okay. Yeah, okay. Right. But then you foot go, push that foot forward again. So it's push it forward. Yeah. So very often we say just pressing on your heel. Yeah. That's what yeah. automatically try yeah. to push your foot Okay. That's good. Forward. Right, in fact, I think that we should go on the short end. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Because what you can do yeah. then, you can walk and chop and have a little hack like that. Yeah. And then we can pull your stirrups up and then get you to hack around with slightly short okay. stirrups. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's something that if you're on a horse that's going to go to naught to sixty very quickly, yeah. <laughs> you doing it's that. not a good idea to throw your reins away. But yeah, that's good. That's a good length. We always give the example, don't we, to the students. There you go, you're a social media girl. You're walking down the road and looking at your phone. Yeah. And you've got to make sure that you concentrate on walking and where you're going at the same time. Yeah. And it's the same on the horse. Because that's the moment that everybody will just walk into the horse in front and end up getting hit. You've naturally brought your leg up like this, which is, is if you're thinking that you're standing on the ground, you naturally go down like this and your leg is underneath you. Yeah. Because a lot of people end up... Like yeah. too much so you need to bring that back and sit, that's it, and sit yeah. nice and tall underneath. It's comfier than a horse. This feels a lot comfier. Yeah. <laughs> it's great to measure. <laughs> and you made it especially for you. Thank you so much. Christmas, <laughs> please, I'll have one of these. <laughs> it actually has got a little bit of a false movement because it's on a wheel, it doesn't yeah. matter. Well, yeah. So when you think you're pushing in nicely, yeah. you're sort of rolling underneath you and you're sort of like, come on, <laughs> it's not quite right. Yeah. But it's, they're, they're pretty good. Okay? So just do to start just a little more? Yeah, because if you were about to set off, you stay sitting. Yeah. And just set off stiff, sitting, one, two, and then you go into first position. You're going to have to change your reins. Can you shorten your reins a little bit? That's it. Okay? And then go into pose. Okay, so we've got to think of that lower leg again. Yeah. Yeah? So, 
I want you now to bring your hips back because you're still quite tall. So when your shoulders go down, they'll come naturally. Just push the weight back. You're pushing this, your bottom further back. Yeah. So that you're bending at the knee, almost like you're going to sit down again. Martini glass? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, martini glass, that's it. And now you've got to keep that. Okay, so you can feel yeah. you absorbing the movement, knee to hip. Yeah. Yeah, the lower legs should be staying as stiff as possible. Yeah, I'm just going to make sure they don't slip back. Yeah. I can feel it's more likely that you'll slip on here than oh, on no. a real horse. Right. Okay, because you always find your stirrups start slipping a little bit here. Okay, so that's good. So if you need to stop, just slow down. And what, do you, what do you do? Um, use your seat. No, no, no. That's a big no. Right. Because as soon as you get, watch the races, if you've seen the jockeys when they're pushing and some of them, like, especially jump jockeys, fall into the sand a bit like this, Bounce, yeah. they're bouncing them up forward. Oh, okay. So if you sit, if you're wanting to stop, yeah. when we're riding long, we sit and we close our horse down. Right. right? When we're riding short, watch you don't go to your knee. Look at this. Yeah? Take this position. See? Yeah. yeah. That's it. And now, now I'm going to sit down again. Okay. That's it. Not without sitting. So, if your horse is pulling, mm -hmm. okay, for you to come, think that your horse pulls, not you. You don't have to pull if your horse doesn't pull. Yeah. Okay? But see, if your horse is trying to go faster and is pulling on you, then you've got to, to keep your hands still. Mm -hmm. but, so you're not actually doing this as pulling, but what you're doing is turning this wrist slightly. That's it. And then you push all your weight behind your hands. Yeah. So you're put, using your balance, like my weight, your weight, yeah, your weight, to sit against their weight. Yeah. But you only do that if they start it. Right. Because I was trying to say, the horse pulls, we hold. Right. So we maintain what the horse is trying yeah. to do. Yeah. And that, you know, if you pull, they'll go faster. You, yeah. If, if the horse doesn't pull, you don't need to pull. You can drop your hands on the neck. We can have a nice light contact, just yeah. like you usually would. Mm -hmm. If he does start to pull, then you just tighten that contact and then you, it's it's up to you to read how much you have to put back against yes. him. So you're maintaining that hold. It's a bit like if you imagine a train going down the hill and you're putting a brake on. Yeah. How much brake do I need? Or the bicycle. How much brake do I need to slow down but not stop? Yeah. And then once they then into like a trot, can you then just see? When you come, so once you've tamed the speed you want, yeah. you might have to maintain that hold. Mm -hmm. Because if you just go, oh, I'm going to run the speed down, this is a mistake a lot of students make. They go, whoa, oh, I'm going to run the speed now, and so then they lose the contact again, and then right. the horse goes, oh, I can go, I'm going yeah. again. <coughs> Sorry, I'm tired with this one. You can sit down. <laughs> when you go to slow down, Give the signal like a little roll in the mouth, or up. Yeah. You're almost stopping the horse. Like a gentle half halt. Kind of yes, thing. a very gentle half halt. But you're saying, oh, okay, because mm -hmm. you just keep pulling. And it just yeah. Going back. Is it like after about five seconds and you're feeling or something? Yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's sort of like I pull, they pull, I pull, they pull. Yeah. And if I want to stop and I go, I'm pulling even harder. Yeah. They're just gonna. So you're saying that message of it's over, pull up, very gentle rolling half hold. And then as they start to, then usually on that, change action yeah. and start to steady up. And at that point, you can just slowly drop everything. Not, yeah. not literally. No. <laughs> so horses are very responsive to voice as well. Yeah. So like I said, so you sometimes can. even just using the voice mm -hmm. and gently yeah. squeezing them slow down. And then, yeah, and then when you you come to slow down, you stay in close position. One, two, three, until they're back into a trot. Okay, so you bring them back to a trot, and it will be an extended trot, like this. Yeah. So then you go, uh, whoa, whoa, again, and slow that extended trot down by sitting down and going back to rising trot. Yeah. And then you slow it down with the cross leg, then sit and back to a walk. Right. So it's like coming down with you. But try not to just sit in the saddle. Yeah. Yeah? Just in pose, so it's, imagine you're doing now, so you're going to pose, so you, you're full, oh, you're gentle, watch the slower legs, watch the yeah, legs, slipping back, okay, 
Okay, and then you can come back to a trot, and then one, two, three, back to rising trot, yep. one, two, back to one. Done. And then just, you know, you start counting before you go up. Yeah. Would you do like a couple of in canter before you get going? Just sit. Yeah. So then go up. Sit and... until you feel that they bring you yeah. out of the saddle. They almost bring you up because yeah. you, you've got that one, two, and up mm. because you're waiting for the, I mean, the horse has got to extend. Yeah. And it could still change its mind at that point. Mm. And if you go, I'm cantering, stand up, and this stuff, it, it digs its toes in. Yeah. And you also give it like a wrong message, you know. If you yeah. stay longer in the saddle and yeah. do it, they just think, oh, we're going nice and steady. Yeah, you know? yeah. But you just straight away go in the pole. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Complete. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to bring your knee forward just so you can bring your bottom up, but if if when your knees come forward like that, how you were, do you remember? Yeah. That you sit that back. Now feel how strong you are. Oh, yeah, flat and top and forward. Right. So, so those couple of inches, that makes such a difference to your balance. So if you're stable, you've got con strength and control. So just a little bit further back. It's, yeah. it's literally not bringing those knees like this. Yes. It's keeping the knee, so the, your lower leg should be perpendicular mm -hmm. to the ground. Right? I've learned so much. <laughs> Great. Okay, and then we'll just go straight to the hands. You've got the feeling of it. Do you want me to go round the other way? Um, no, you're fine because you went this way round. Okay, so yeah, just go back. Alison, also known as Mrs. Harper. <laughs> now she's instructor at the school. Alison, can you please tell me a little bit about school? Well, we're, um, we're a school, obviously, to teach people to go um, into the workplace in, in racing. And we're based here in Newmarket, and the school's been here since 1983. When students come here, I, I 
it would be like a week, how many weeks would it be of the courses? Because there's different courses that they can do. Yeah, we have different, sorry, I'm being attacked by King's Game. So we've got um, several different courses of different lengths, uh, depending on the previous experience and ability of the, of the future students, of the trainees. So we would have um, um, a 12 week course for people that have already ridden ponies, that, that have been involved with horses most of their lives. Uh, and then we would have an um, 18 week course for people that have got very little or no experience at all. So I'm so. right in saying that you don't have to be a rider, anyone, because I know this last year that you know there are some people who come on the course that have never ridden before. Yes, um, one of my last 18-week uh, course had seven non-riders, uh, together with six riders that had ridden sometimes. So if there's someone at home watching this and they'd like to get involved, how can they do that? So if you'd like to apply to the racing school, or you can, we have open days that you can come and have a look. We also have virtual open days on a regular basis, so keep your eye out on the website for that. Um, otherwise, if you're just convinced and you'd really like to do it, then just go to the um, British Racing School website and you can see the application form. You send off the application and then you'll be in touch with a lovely lady called Miss Goody and she will send you all the information you need to apply to the school. And lastly, just while we're here, we've got beautiful horses behind us. These horses yes. that have uh, been in training for have they for coming to the school. What, what kind of history do they have? Well, we've got um, just under 80 horses and they all, they're all they all ex-race horses except for Andrew, who's our cop. And um, they've got all different experiences. You've got horses that have never made it to the racetrack, uh, up to horses like Kingsgate here, who was a Group 1 winner and uh, a superstar and very spoiled. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Alison. It's been a wonderful morning. You're welcome. And uh, it's lovely to meet the horses. I want to meet Andrew now. OK, we'll meet Andrew. So he's our only non-race horse. And we use him as well when we do the endpoint assessments of the apprenticeships for lunge because he's um, unloading. So he doesn't get himself all worked up. Yeah. He's in the box and get And he lunges and sort of they don't have problems in stopping it. No. Well, don't take my whole hand. <laughs> <laughs>